making a good model isn't about making a good picture. It's about making a good argument for what something should be. Because models are never the end. You should never make a model with the intent that this is, this is the end all be all. Right? Models are means to an end. We wanna make something else. We wanna deliver some software. We wanna make a, a product of some sort. We wanna uh, build a building, right? We don't wanna make a model. Models are how we make the thing that we wanna make uh, right the first time or, or more efficiently. Which brings us to, you know, well, why, why do these? So if they aren't the end, why do we bother making them? Well, they help us work through our ideas faster by getting things out of our heads and allowing us to collaborate more easily with others. They make what uh, the invisible ideas and concepts that are in our heads, they make them visible and tangible so that we can further explore them, and iterate on them. Um, I don't know if you've ever had this where you, you have an idea and you've thought about it over and over again and you think it's really clear and really good. And as soon as you get it out on paper, you're like, hmm, it's not really a there there. I don't know, I don't know what's going on. I thought it was pretty awesome, but, uh, or I thought I had this all figured out, but there's so much more, there's so much more to be done. Uh, models have an amazing ability to do that. Uh, if we can be bold enough to, to get our ideas out of our heads. Um, Right, because when we can, when, and then we can, when we can see them outside of just our mind's eye, we can better explore and see the boundaries. We can see the contents of what's in there. Um, these tangible representations, uh, whether they're physical, I keep pretending it's a physical thing, but it can perfectly well be digital. Most of the models that I make are digital, um, but they're certainly more tangible than what I imagine in my head. Uh, so that's why I use that word. But. These representations are a way of documenting what we mean or, or what we're thinking about. Uh, and by documenting what we mean, we can easier, more easily identify the gaps in our understanding. Um, we can ask better questions to fill those gaps. Um, and lastly, in a, in a world that's often so, in a world and industry that's often so triggered by the thought of making documentation rather than the actual thing that you wanna make, um, shippable code, if you will. Uh, it's important to know that when we're making models, these models, they're gonna serve as molds to what we actually wanna make in the end. When we make models, we're, we're creating the constructs, the concepts and the constructs, the language-based conceptual infrastructure of what the actual product or code or thing will be made of. And so we're not, we're not just making documentation and pictures that will get thrown out. Uh, we're creating something by, by making something tangible that we can all align on and agree on. We're making an intangible uh, construct that, that will underpin uh, the thing that we're making. Um, Carl Jung, the father of analytical psychology, uh, has this lovely quote, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. And uh, have you ever been in a, in a situation where you're talking about something and things are happening and it's, you're not sure anybody actually knows what's going on and it's this cloud of obscurity and confusion that's driving things forward, like it has its mind of its own. Uh, we make models so that we can make the things we intend to rather than just hoping and praying that things work out in the end. And so as a consultant, I grew tired of having to sell the process of making a model before knowing exactly what I wanted to learn from the process of modeling. Um, I wanted a means to talk about models before having created them. Uh, I'm, I find myself saying two things a lot. One is it depends. And the other is I'll know after I do it, um, which is not helpful when you are trying to sell some work or when you're trying to get somebody to sign off on uh, you spending time doing something. Uh, but I found it unhelpful to, or I found it uh, difficult and um, yeah, unhelpful to have to specify what exactly the thing would look like before I got into, before I got into it and explore, explored the information. 
Uh, I wanted a means to talk about models before having created them, not, not based on what they looked like, but based on what I would get out of them and the kinds of conversations that they would help me facilitate, because that's what's important. Um, and that's the kind of thing that you can know ahead of time. Uh, the, it's, it's the what of the model. What is it for rather than the how of the model? What are you gonna, how are you gonna, you know, pull off this visualization that expresses this complex idea? It doesn't matter how you pull it off. It matters whether or not it does the thing that you wanted it to do. <clears throat> so I wanted to shift from talking about these rigid formulaic ways of, of different types of models, you know, site map, journey map, wireframes, sketches, right? You, these, as I'm saying these things, they're probably popping up little thumbnails in your head of what they look like or what they should look like. Um, and I wanted to instead focus on uh, understanding the attributes of what makes up any kind of model so that I could really specify uh, and make the kind of model that would help me get the outcome that I wanted. So that's that's what led me to, to kind of go down this path of, of exploring how this framework might, might come to life. 